Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm gonna to talk about Intel's NUC 12 Enthusiast Kit, and I'm gonna be pushing it to the limit with Vegas Pro 21 to test how good this is as a workstation PC and not just a gaming PC. So to start this off, if you don't know what a NUC is, it's just a compact computer built by Intel, and they're full of the latest and greatest hardware, which makes for a really nice desktop alternative. Magix, the company that owns and creates software like Vegas Pro, Music Maker, Video Pro X, Acid, Photo Story, and many more, partnered with Intel to show that NUCs are not only great gaming computers, but also great workstation computers for creatives. I was able to get my hands on one of these NUCs, specifically the NUC 12 Enthusiast Kit, to see how good of a multimedia workstation it can be. Let's go over the specs of this NUC and compare them to their competitors. This specific one I have, which is the NUC 12 Enthusiast Kit, also known as Serpent Canyon, comes with these specs. A 12th Gen Intel i7 12700H processor, an Intel Arc 730M GPU, 32GB of RAM, and a 1TB Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And it also comes with quite a few other awesome specs that don't necessarily apply to this video or multimedia in general, but if you did want to see the extreme details of this NUC in particular, you can check out my review video I created for it by clicking the card above or the link in the description. This i7 processor is comparable to an AMD Ryzen 9 5900, while the ARC 730M graphics card is about as good as an RTX 3060 mobile or an AMD RX 5700 XT. So if you do have that AMD processor or any of the GPUs I mentioned, you will now know a good baseline to tell how well your computer will perform compared to this NUC. So let's start this off by navigating through Vegas and going over the preferences and settings that I use on a regular basis. All right, so I have Vegas 21 open right here. I'm gonna go up to options, then go down to preferences, and then it's gonna start in the general tab. I like to uncheck automatically open last project on startup personally, and then I also like to uncheck use newsfeed to stay informed about Vegas. Everything else can stay the same. Under the video tab, we would go to dynamic RAM preview. Depending on the file sizes that I'm using for whichever project I'm creating, I like to adjust the dynamic RAM preview max. If I'm using smaller file sizes that aren't too long and aren't too big, I like to keep it around maybe 30 or 40 percent. If I'm using big file sizes like ProRes or DSLR footage, I like to keep it right around the maybe the 10 to 20 percent range. I keep maximum number of rendering threads at 32, and for GPU acceleration of video processing, I like to choose the graphics card that's inside my computer. Under thumbnails to show video events, instead of all, I like to choose head center and tail. And then personally, I like to disable automatically create video proxies. I'll pretty much create a proxy if I want to, but if I don't want to, I don't want Vegas to do that for me. Under the preview device tab, I like to check the wait for vertical sync box, and that's about it for that tab. I'm done with this row, now I'm going up to File I.O. I like to enable the MKV Reader, and then down here, Raw Processor to Use, I like to choose my graphics card. And then Hardware Decoder to Use, even though it's on Auto, I still like to manually choose my graphics card. Now moving to Deprecated Features, I still like to enable Legacy Text, because I feel like it's a little bit lighter weight than the built-in Vegas Titles and Text. It is limited in a lot of functionality compared to Vegas' Titles and Text, but I still like to enable it for Quick Tech Editions. Now moving over to external control and automation. The changes I like to make are these options down here. I like to change them all to smooth because smooth transitions look the best to me personally. And now moving up to the display tab, I like to change my interface to medium. I like dark, it's okay, but medium is what I prefer because that's kind of what I'm used to. And then I also like to change my track colors. I've changed all of these to specific colors that are more complimentary and pleasing to my eyes. So if you wanted to download my preferences, you can do so using the link I put in the description. And that's about all I changed for Vegas's preferences. Now we're gonna dive into performance. To show you the most accurate results, I am running an HDMI cord out of the NUC into an Elgato HD 60S Plus capture card that goes back into the monitor. I have the Elgato connected to a separate computer via USB 3 cable, which is running OBS Studio, so I get to record exactly what the NUC sees at a fluid 60 frames per second in 1080p. By doing it this way, there is absolutely no additional computer resources being used by the NUC while I still get to record exactly what's happening on the screen, therefore providing the most accurate performance and rendering results. So first, let's see how well it can scrub through a variety of baseline footage of various qualities, sizes, and codecs. 
I went ahead and created some high quality test footage that I initially recorded in 5.7K ProRes HQ on my Lumix GH6. I then rendered the exact same 30 second clips in different resolutions and codecs so I could have the most accurate baseline tests. So I've created three separate test projects in here. The first test project is going to be the original 5.7K ProRes HQ footage. The next project is the 4K project, which has 4K ProRes high quality footage, 4K X264 AVC codec footage, and 4K X265 HEVC codec footage. And finally, the third project is the 1080p project. I have 1080p ProRes HQ footage on there, 1080p X264 AVC footage on there, and 1080p X265 HEVC footage on there. So we're going to start off in the 5.7K timeline. I set the preview quality to best full and I'm not adding any effects on these clips right now. I am also not going to proxy any of the footage so you can see the absolute worst case scenario results and know that it can only get better as you drop the preview quality and utilize proxies. So for these tests, I'm just going to right click on the timeline cursor, hold down the right click mouse button, and drag it across the media to scrub through the clips and test how smooth Vegas 21's playback is for each of these resolutions and codecs. So starting with a 5.7K, it's only in ProRes. I didn't create a 5.7K X264 AVC or X265 HEVC for the 5.7K footage. We're just going to be going over how well it performs on 5.7K ProRes for this timeline specifically. As we drag it back and forth, you can see that it actually performs really, really well. ProRes footage in Kodak is known to have some of the best playback performance given in any video editor. You can drag your cursor back and forth and it will almost keep up perfectly without having to load any frame in particular or give extra time to do that. So we can see it scrubs through pretty well. Now let's move to the 4K timeline. The farthest clip we have on the left is the AVC footage, and if we drag back and forth there, we can see it takes a little bit of time to load, just a, a little bit, not too much. It's still pretty good playback, especially for no effects on it and for 4K footage. If we move over to the middle one, we have the HEVC, and we can see that it does provide a little bit of lag scrubbing through um, because HEVC stands for High Efficiency Video Codec, and it is renowned for being some of the worst footage to try to edit with because of how much resources it takes to even read these types of codecs. And if we move over to the ProRes, we can see that it's perfect. There's no loading at all. If you're scrubbing back and forth, you could see each individual frame being loaded instantaneously just about. And then we move to the 1080p timeline. On the far left side, we do have the AVC footage. We're scrolling through that and it's of course better than the 4K footage and it's still going pretty good. We almost see a near instantaneous frame loading when we're scrubbing through. And if we move over to the HEVC, we can see that it does delay just a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to go ahead and scrub through left and right inside that HEVC footage. And then if we move over to ProRes, we can see again, it's instantaneous. There's no loading at all. It just knows what it's doing and it's super, super smooth. Now let's move on to some real world tests. We're going to see how well Vegas handles an intense amount of effects on each of these clips. I'm going to stack specific effects on top of these clips in their own timelines. And the effects I'll be adding are Mocha Vegas, which comes with Vegas Pro 21 Suite and Post versions, Vegas Color Grading Panel, where I'm going to be adding a conversion LUT, S Shake from Boris Effects Sapphire, which is one of the most common effects that the average Vegas user applies to their footage, Real Smart Motion Blur, which is the absolute best motion blur plugin I've ever used, Style Transfer, which is an intense visual effect that Vegas comes with that uses AI to alter your media and replicate famous art styles, Neat Video, which is the industry standard for removing digital noise from your video. And then I'm gonna add two different transitions. We got Warp Flow Transition, since it's one of the most heavy and intense transitions Vegas has that uses optical flow to change scenes. And then I'm gonna use a Boris Continuum Transition, which those are some of the most common transitions used by Vegas users. I'm essentially going to try to make Vegas crash. I'm gonna do my best to make that happen. All right, so for the stress test, I'm gonna start off with adding Mocha Vegas to this 5.7K footage and doing a quick track on it. Once I track it, you can see that it's not as perfectly smooth as it was. It's starting to take a little bit of time to load the frames, but not too bad. And then I go ahead and add the color grading panel and throw a conversion LUT on there. And we can see that it starts to take a little bit longer to load the frames. Then I throw on neat video and reduce the noise, which is a very intense effect. And as you can see, it takes even longer to load each frame. Then I go ahead and throw on S shake and add motion blur to it. And then we can see it only struggles more and more from there. Finally, I'm adding style transfer onto 
to there, and we can see that it takes at least two or three seconds to even load one frame. Then I split the clip, change the styles around, and add two transitions, first one being warp flow and the next one being Boris continuum transition. And now it's taking multiple seconds to load even one frame at a time. We can see that if we drop the quality down to draft quarter, we can actually scrub through this decently well. But let's go ahead and switch over to the 4K stress test now. I added a Mocha Vegas track to each of these clips, and we can see that it's not too bad scrubbing through these, but it is still taking a little bit of time to load each frame. Then I throw on Vegas color grading panel and a conversion LUT, and we can see that it's starting to struggle a little bit more, but it's still not too bad for the 4K footage. HEVC is performing the worst during this, and ProRes is still performing the best. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the effects. S-Shake, Real Smart Motion Blur, Neat Video Noise Remover, Style Transfer, Vegas's Warp Flow Transition, and Boris's Continuum Transition. And we can see that when we drag and release our cursor on any moment on this timeline, it takes multiple seconds to load even one frame. Now, during this 4K footage stress test, I did end up crashing Vegas and had reloaded a couple times. And now let's go ahead and check out our 1080p footage. Again, I added a Mocha Vegas track to it, and we can see that the results are better than all the other ones, which are pretty obvious because it's 1080p compared to 4K and 5.7K. So we're still experiencing quite a bit of smoothness while we're dragging through, which isn't too bad. And then I go ahead and add on the color grading panel with a conversion LUT, and then I go ahead and add the rest of the effects. S-Shake, Real Smart Motion Blur, Neat Video Noise Remover, Style Transfer, Vegas's Warp Flow Transition, and Boris's Continuum Transition. And so even on 1080p footage, all of these massive effects added to clips in the best full resolution still are crazy intense on Vegas and this entire editing rig, which is as expected. And now the time has come to test the rendering speeds. I'll be labeling each one and ranking them from fastest to slowest. We'll go over which codec performed the best and why. We'll also be using these default rendering options that come included with Vegas Pro. We're going to render in AVC X264, 8-bit, 420 chroma subsampling, the processor-only version, and then we're going to do the same AVC X264, 8-bit, 420 chroma subsampling, but use Intel's Quick Sync Video, which is Intel's equivalent to NVIDIA's NVENC. Then I'm also going to render using HEVC X265, 10-bit, 420 chroma subsampling, processor-only, then HEVC, X265, 10-bit, 420 Chroma subsampling with Intel QSV. And then finally, I'm going to use Apple ProRes 422HQ 10-bit. I'll be rendering each of these clips twice. One render will be the original video without any effects, and the other one was going to contain all of the effects. But when I started these render tests, trying to render with all of those effects on these clips ended up taking the first ones over an hour or so to render, which is pretty much just unusable and unheard of when it comes to render times. So instead of rendering with all of those effects I listed, the only effects we're going to be rendering with are the Mocha Vegas effect, the Vegas color grading panel effect, and the S-Shake effect with motion blur enabled inside of it, and we will also still be using those two transitions, warp flow and Boris continuum transition. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go over the results. I separated them into four sections. On the top left, we have 1080p with no effects. Top right, we have 1080p with effects. Bottom left, we have 4K with no effects. And bottom right, we have 4K with effects. In the 1080p with no effects, in first place, we have ProRes at 8.52 seconds. And in a very close second, we have AVC QSV at 8.58 seconds. A few seconds later, we have HEVC QSV at 12 seconds. And then way down in fourth and fifth place, we have HEVC and AVC processor only at 46 and 54 seconds. Now moving over to 1080p with effects, in first place, we have ProRes again at 2 minutes and 34 seconds. And in a very close second, we have HEVC processor only at 2 minutes and 44 seconds. Then in third, fourth, and fifth, we have HEVC QSV, AVC processor only, and AVC QSV. Surprisingly, the QSV are in the last three places. Moving down to 4K with no effects, first place we have AVC QSV with 20 seconds. And then in second place, we have ProRes at 29 seconds. A close third, we have HEVC QSV at 32 seconds. And then way in fourth and fifth, we have HEVC and AVC processor only at a minute 40 and 2 minutes and 15 seconds. And finally, 4K with effects, first place we have HEVC QSV at 8 minutes and 36 seconds. 
Then about a minute later, we have AVC QSV at 9 minutes and 29 seconds. And then almost tied for third place, we have 4K ProRes that just barely beat HEVC, coming in at 9 minutes and 48.61 seconds, while HEVC processor only came in at 9 minutes and 48.84 seconds. And then a couple minutes later, AVC finally comes in fifth place at 11 minutes. Now, looking at all these results, you might think, which one should you render with? Which one is the best to render with? Well, here's the summed up version. ProRes is the best quality. It provides the highest bitrate with the highest chroma subsampling, but the downside is it has a high file size. As you can see, it renders pretty fast in all aspects, so it is a fantastic choice if you have the storage space available. And if I didn't want to do ProRes, as a next one, I would most likely choose AVC QSV as a mid-grade alternative. It's going to be providing 8-bit video depth and only 420 chroma subsampling. So it's not going to be as sharp as ProRes and you're not going to have as deep of colors, but you're going to have a pretty good looking video with not too big of a file size. And then if I were to choose a third option, I would choose HEVC QSV because with HEVC, you can get the same quality as AVC for about 30 to 40% less of a file size. So if you are short on hard drive space, then HEVC is a pretty good option to do. You can get 10-bit video depth with HEVC, but still only 420 chroma subsampling. So it's not going to be looking as good as ProRes, but it may look a little better than AVC. Now the time has come for my final thoughts. So is this NUC good as a workstation? My answer, yes, this NUC is great for a workstation. It can definitely be used as an everyday video editing machine. Vegas handles extremely well on it. It is peppy. It is fast. It is pretty much just as good as my desktop that I custom built for video editing. There are still some little glitches I found when using some plugins that utilize GPU, but again, I didn't test every single plugin. So for the most part, every plugin that I tested works pretty well with Arc GPUs. Rendering is quick in all various resolutions and codecs, so you get to choose whichever one you want and you'll be happy with the results. So I hope this video shed some light on NUCs and their ability to be workstation computers and not just gaming computers. And that wraps it up for this video. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next one.